Greetings everyone and welcome to a quick note before the video starts properly and of course the proper greetings. So this is a video which very nearly never got uploaded. It is incredibly all over the place, the end result is nothing like what I was after at the start, but it was a load of fun to do and the end result is actually very effective if incredibly cheesy. So just a warning, there's going to be a lot of weirdness with how this video goes from something small to something, well, you've seen the title and the thumbnail. I hope you enjoy anyway, and consider this a free video which I recorded at 2am, as usual. Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to a bit of an unscheduled video, since the next From the Depths was meant to be Ashes of the Empire. But since that video is taking so long to edit and get the footage for, I've decided we're going to do yet another chill build. Now, in the previous build, we built our little sub, which is able to disable ships and then attack it with short-range torpedoes, even though we found out that the explosive damage now knocks torpedoes away, meaning that if you have a swarm of them, they're actually not all that fantastic. They used to be pretty good at simply boring little holes into the enemy and then simply causing them to sink. So I may have to redo the back weapon a little bit, but overall the sub was a huge success. Now today, I've decided we're going to do something also underwater, but something I haven't done in a long time, and I've certainly never perfected. And let me just quickly show what I'm talking about. So if we go into the airships, let's just summon in... Naturally, that was a good time for someone to call me. It may be 1am, but people will always randomly call Lathrix whenever I try to record. It's like I have a beacon on me or something. Either way, let's spawn in the Conga, one of the largest and most powerful of the Deepwater Guard units. And let me show you what I'm talking about, since I haven't really showcased what I'm talking about yet. Let's just turn this off, because the thing I'm trying to showcase isn't finished yet. And in a second, from the water itself... I said from the water itself, thank you. 500 millimeter kinetic shells, which go through many, many, many layers of armor. Even heavy armor. So the idea I have is a defense turret, which you can simply drop to the bottom of the ocean, but with a bit of a twist, it won't be a building. It's going to be an actual vehicle, so you can simply drop it anywhere and then move it on the map. Of course, moving it slowly, but still. The idea is to reinforce areas you've already captured quite easily. Yep, ignoring salvage. Although it didn't actually kill the thing yet, you get the idea. As a prototype, it looks pretty cool, doesn't it? And now we can't shoot it because there's a rock in the way. Because of course there is. Now, the unit I've been using is the Test Cannon, which is 41,000 resources and 3,000 volume. But the thing is... Uh, let's get this up so I can actually see where it is. There we are. The thing is, almost all of that volume is being used up in the thing it's attached to. Yep, it's pretty much a parasite right now, just testing out the weapon. So what we're going to do is build a better version of this. Just look at how bad that Tetris is which can be dropped and which will sink and then anchor to the floor, enabling the whole area to be protected. So with that, let's get building. After resetting the designer, here we go then, let's start work on our little defense turret. So, as you can see, we are going down the route, almost as always, of the dedicated Hellerblade spinner, because these things are just wonderful. They work underwater, they work above water, they're super easy to control and super just reliable. And the reason why we're having this, it almost seems like it's pointless, but it really is quite important. We're using this because the overall design won't sink fast enough and could easily flip or simply tip on the way down even if the center of mass is below the halfway point. I've seen it happen too many times. Having this on the bottom and having it simply pushed downwards causes the entire craft to face down and of course it sinks a lot faster so it will anchor onto the floor even if the floor is a little bit uneven. Still don't really want to put it on somewhere like that little hillside there, which you can totally see. Come on. Let's make this worth it. There you go, look. There's a bit of a hill there, you can sort of see it. That will still mess up, is what I'm trying to say. Now, the weapon will go above this, of course. So let's put down a bit of a base. So, like that. Then regular metal blocks, and we'll beef this up all the way. Double the beef, because of the stammer, of course. 
and then this can be sort of a core section. Now, this can go down a lot further. Um, honestly, the weapon's going to be larger than this. So, we could quite easily go ahead and increase the size a little bit more. So, maybe like this, and then we can also increase the size of the rotors. This also means that, hopefully, we don't have to add an engine. Because right now, I am not intending this to have an engine at all. It's going to be cheap and cheerful with one nice, very powerful gun, and that's it. I don't want it to have anything like shields or any form of real good defense purely because of the cost of the thing. I want it to be cheap and nice and if we lose it then we lose it. It's no big deal. Which seems to be a theme we're going with at the moment. I will be making a few more elite designs very soon. There we are. Good enough. Just going to put a piece of heavy armor down on both sides here. Because this is where some of the control blocks are going to go. And just attaching it this way will just make everything a bit more secure. These will be all of the control blocks for the entire vehicle. And all we want is spin blocks. Rotation speed to minus 30. No, just 30. Yeah, because it's facing down already. And honestly, just every few seconds. We always want this on, even when it's landed. The question is, do we want the always up option to be a thing? Maybe we do. Maybe we do. Then, of course, in reverse. Thank you, because the always up needs to be reversed like that. And then once we add some mass to the bottom, it will make this a lot more secure, since we need to add the rubber section anyway. Just make sure to make the bottom out of a lot of lead and stone. There we go. It sinks. Still a bit slowly, though. Hopefully when we add some more white to this thing, it'll be better. We might need an engine. If we do, it's just going to be a basic RTG engine or a really basic steam engine. I've just quickly put the mainframe down on the inside, and we'll quickly reinforce that later. So now, let's add the turret itself. There we are. Now, you may be wondering, why am I using kinetic shells, when honestly, many other shells like Hesh and such tend to be a lot better. The reason is, with the advanced cannons, the only way to fire through water with any reliability is to use a very specific type of ammo. So if we quickly just put this down so I can show you. There we are, the Super Cavernation Base. It removes 90% of the slowdown incurred by water, which is fantastic, and also removes the chance of the shell from skimming. The problem is, it lowers warhead payloads by 75%. This is explosive, fragment, and EMP. So naturally, it's not all that effective if you use anything else. It seems to not really affect the kinetic outside of the fact you are still being slightly slowed by the water so the shell doesn't quite reach the exact speed it wants to which means it will be a little bit weaker upon impact now if we have it this tall it means we can have two lines of the auto loader quite easily put inside but then of course i'll need it to be at least one higher and then the weapon there and that is going to look really really weird and our volume is already 381 the max volume I'm looking for is 4,000, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem, but it would make the defense turret a little bit bigger than I originally wanted, which may be okay. Yeah, maybe we should just go with the extreme. If we do go above 4,000, that's when I will definitely be adding an engine, because I will definitely want shields, because the thing will be so expensive, it's worth the extra cost to protect it. So, let's go with that. Also, I'll just have everyone know for a second, I have never actually built a turret using the 8 meter shells. Ever. Except for the one we did earlier as a test. Well, I did earlier as a test, just to make sure that this thing would even work. So, I am not good with this. So, expect this to be a hastily done turret, which I will change in the future. Just ignore the weapon itself. This is not done yet. This is literally a box of things, because I want to check a few dimensions. It's not done. Can I please mention this is not a good weapon? Please don't copy it. But seriously, don't copy this. This is terrible. I'm just very quickly trying to scope out a few dimensions. There we are, like this. Getting a bit of lag here, which I think is a bit of a memory leak. Either way, though, yeah, that would be a good size. Just need to redo this so we have a decent Tetris inside, but still, 
And for those wondering why I say the word Tetris, it's because it simply means slotting in all the different parts there and making them efficient. The reason why this is a bad design, so, so at least you can learn from why this is wrong, is because almost all of these autoloaders only have one of these, um, what are they called? The lovely, wonderful, and amazing ammo clips. And because of that, they are woefully inefficient at transferring to the weapon itself. So after all of these run out, it's going to be a long time till the next one can fire. But if we're only firing at maybe one round per second, I think this would still work. How do I want this then? Is it like a giant cylinder or is it a giant sort of rectangle? Hmm. I don't actually know. How about a cylinder with massive reinforcements on the outside, which then connect to the legs at the bottom, which will hold the rubber so this thing doesn't constantly take damage? Also, I want to see how badly this sinks right now. Yeah, that's what I was expecting, because it's currently way too top-heavy. But, because we have this on always up, it's actually not too bad. Think we will need a basic engine, though. Yep, definitely going to make a quick change, though. What I'm going to do is raise this again by one, which is going to make this way bigger than I originally thought. Yeah, this is going to be huge. Even if we left the turret as it is, which we're not going to, by the way, but even if we did, which is quite small, this is going to be ridiculously huge. But yeah, we're definitely going to have to do that, otherwise it's only one sheet of metal. Even if this is heavy armour, this just means this all gets destroyed straight away. There needs to be at least two layers. Honestly, I'm thinking three. So raise this up to where this ends, then have the weapon here. This is going to be massive. More of a fortress than a um, portable turret, but it will still work, I guess. Maybe this is more a portable fortress, then, rather than a portable turret. But still, it will get the job done. And honestly, it's still not that expensive. If we can make this less than 50k, and this is still our main reinforcement thing, then it's still, it's still okay, honestly. So how am I going to do this? Well, I'd like it to be crisscross, but we don't really have enough space to do that. Technically, we do. Technically, we do. But then this would have to be flat, which looks really bad in my opinion for a turret, but it would be really, really heavily armoured that way. Now by crisscross, what I mean is doing it like horizontal, then vertical. Or I could just do it this way. That, then that. It just makes it so armour-piercing shots have more trouble getting a direct line all the way through, because if it hits this tile here, exactly where my cursor is, it knocks out this, but then the one underneath it is now facing this way, so if it then breaks through again, it's left with only a one hole. On the other hand, if it did it the other way around, then what would happen, let's say it's got two the same way, destroys this one, then destroys this one, there's a full gap, a beam wide. Hi there, I'm Lathrix. I'm gonna build a quick defense turret. I I'm sure it won't end up like a giant bloody fortress. Oh wait, I'm Lathrix. Of course it's gonna end up like a giant bloody fortress. So, yeah, this is way too big. On the upside, this is gonna cause some major damage to anything which can't deal with it instantly. And even those which can deal with it, deal with it instantly, or deal with it instantly, as I just said, it's still going to cause some serious damage, because now we're going to add the side areas, one of which will... Well, actually, most of them will contain something. So, they're going to contain the ammunition, a weak engine, and then probably a full mainframe section, because right now the mainframe's just there, just so we have it installed. But I need to actually protect it. This is going to look so, so odd. I mean, it's still going to look like a turret. There's the thing. It's just going to look like a really, really, really fat one. It's a turret which really needs to go on a diet. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Let's just chop off that for a sec. So how am I going to do this thing? We're just going to go straight down. It looks simple, but I think it also looks very clean if we do it this way. Yeah, it will. So we do this for a few layers, so maybe it's about here-ish. Then we go straight down, then at the bottom we expand all along the edges, which will then contain the legs, which will have the rubber, and will just basically be filled with stone, so the bottom section's heavier. Then we can have the ammunition wherever we feel like can be the easiest to protect. Okay. Okay. 
At this point, I think I'm not going to have enough time to finish this as I want to, because like I say, I'm currently recording this in the early AM as a bit of an extra video, because I just finished editing something else together, and that's going to take some time to render, and honestly, I'll probably have to redo some of the bits anyway. So, once again, Building the Fleet, it's the, it's the chill series. It's a series where I just get to test ideas and get your opinion on them. And, a lot of the time, just mess up completely. I swear, I am incapable of making things symmetrical on the first go. Seriously, there were three symmetry errors with that. Did you spot them all? But seriously, why am I so bad with the first build every bloody time? Also, I'm saying bloody too much tonight. I don't know why, either. I think it's because I've been talking to my family too much recently. No one should speak to their family much, but my family does use the word bloody a lot in their basic speech, so I think I've ended up copying them a bit. You know what? That looks really nice. Yeah, that looks good. That looks really, really fortified. Way bigger than expected. Yeah, we're going with the building. We're, we're going with the building. We're building the fortress is what I was going to say there, but instead we are going with the building. Now this outer sheet I'm currently building won't really provide much protection, but it will provide a large section of space armor, which will be good versus Hesh and Heat, but also it will be good versus Explosive, since the Explosive hits here, and then hopefully the Radius doesn't go all the way to the inner armor, which will have at least one more layer anyway. So, it's something, and it's nice and cheap. I really wonder why I end up calling this video Mobile Fortress, Mobile Defense Turret, Mobile Defense Turret Fortress, Mobile Flupenflagen. Let's do that. There we go. Oops, it is missing the mark there a little bit. Don't do that one just yet. And we carry on. Lathrix, was this whole build just an excuse to build layers upon layers of armor for no apparent reason? I'm starting to think that maybe it is. Maybe it is. Either way, though, this thing should be very difficult to kill by the time I'm done with it. Though, saying that, I still haven't added the engine and everything, so... It may seem like there's a lot of space for more armor and stuff now, but later on, maybe that won't be the case. In our little mobile sunken fortress. A very quick test here. Oh, that was beautiful. Oh, listen to that internal damage. Okay, so... They were some really oversized torpedoes. The idea is they were explosive and frag. They explode the outside armor. The fragments can do some internal damage. And that looks exactly like what it's done. Overall, though, missiles and torpedoes are not what they used to be. They used to be a good main weapon. But now they're more of a side thought. Okay, still good enough. I think I will keep them. Hey, you managed to sink to the ground eventually. Well done. I guess it would be worth adding a PID at this stage. It was so large. Yeah. Also, don't worry. The explosive barrels are not a permanent addition to the actual turret itself. They will be added somewhere else. Now, despite the fact this is much larger than I originally intended, it's still only 54,000 resource. Now, we still don't have the ammunition and stuff installed, but I still think this will be less, in fact far less, than 100,000 by the very, very end. So what I'm thinking is this is a sort of light game... Defender of the line. So if you have your battle lines, you clearly own a certain area. This will be what you put down to make sure that area continues to be supported by your forces. And then as your line goes forwards, as you command more area, it simply slides along with your fortresses and then protects the next area and the next area. And perhaps it's a one-off or a two-off and can even get involved in some of the end battles. Now, for this section, although the turret will move, just while it's stationary, I think this will look pretty cool. Go back to this. It's funny how I'm actually ignoring the turret more than anything else. Also, I've probably put a thing now at the start of the video, though I'm hoping I did, because I'm going to talk about it anyway, in which I've probably talked about how I've changed my mind about the design, and, well, it makes less sense when you hear me talk about the start, how it's going to be a little turret, and then, well, it ends up like this. Maybe this should be put out a bit more forwards. Kind of looks like a face. Oh, look at its snoot. 
The snoot of... Death. The death snoot. If I continue to work on this, I've just realised what this could be. It could be the end base of the Lathrixian Legion. So, you know how the Onyx Watch has the Onyx Throne and so on and so forth? Well, this could be our thing. And naturally it has a snoot. And a sort of smiley face. Because we're the good guys and we love even the invaders in our land. Yeah, that doesn't sound right. So I've decided to remove the torpedoes from where they are currently because honestly, although the face sort of shape was kind of hilarious, I didn't like how it looked. It looked too much like a face. So now, it just looks like a defense turret, honestly. As soon as you remove the red eyes, which were the torpedoes, it goes back to being just what it is now. The torpedo system could be added all over the craft, honestly. If we have them fire directly up, then have a slight delay on their targeting, they could go up, turn, and then go forward towards the target. And that would be just fine, as long as they have enough um, forward propulsion. In fact, that's probably the better idea, because we can have four sets of it. Also, yeah, my speech is going, because I'm getting very tired right now. But I do like how this is turning out. It's just a spam of blocks, really. It's nothing difficult. It's nothing like, aha, look at my engineering prowess. But it's fun. And I like building things like this from time to time, which are just built to last and not die. Even though shielding this thing is going to be an absolute nightmare. Just thinking. We could have missiles as well. So half them torpedoes, half them missiles. That would be okay. That would be okay. Let's see. Let's just build a little platform this far down. Obviously not a permanent platform. Just going to quickly do that. There we are. If we go with missiles, we're definitely going to need a lot of the ejector add-ons. Honestly, I'm thinking all four at minimum. So we have launch pad like so. Then we have the, where are you, the ejector add-ons. There we go. One, two, three. Three, four. Now, there's a good chance, even with that, the missile wouldn't get all the way to the surface, which is the problem. So, this is where the next one goes. So, we will have to have a bit more of a gap. So, one there, then one here. I think it would be okay, but the missiles will have to be a little bit smaller than I would like, and they would have to have a delay on their thrust. But I think that would work. We could, of course, add a torpedo propeller to them as well. That way they could move up until they get outside of the water. I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to have two of them as missile bays and two of them as torpedo bays. That way we can counter air and ground a little bit better, especially since the missiles won't really need proper detection. As long as we have, even if we just go ahead and use the detection systems and the missile radar here, the missile radar here even, this is the sonar, this is the radar, we can attach this, throw it up, and as long as one of them is above the surface, we can at least see that there's an enemy above the surface, then the missiles can just go and do their own thing. And that could be attached anywhere, just a basic missile system which constantly releases them, so they're floating on the surface, so this thing can see what's going on. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense actually, plus, that would use up this compartment here and be very useful, in fact we could then reinforce, then reinforce, then triple reinforce at the bottom, this is where the ammo can go and everything else, and obviously this will be very hard to hit because first of all it's on the ground, at the very bottom of the ocean, but then you have to go at a weird angle to get at it, so hopefully that will be okay. It also means that the main weapon isn't the only weapon, so if this gets destroyed, we have backups. Yeah, let's do that. Still fairly cheap. Still fairly cheap. I'm thinking about 100 to 150k by the end of this. My god, I have never changed design so much during a video. It is looking to be quite a generic looking design, but let's see how the missiles work. They've got a lot of distance to travel, and I imagine what's going to happen is even with the delay, they're going to come out of the water slightly on their side, or perhaps completely on their side, but hopefully enough that they will still enter the air and reach the target. Oh look, there's an enemy atlas! Quickly, kill it! Yep, doing what I thought they would, but still, will they reach the target at medium distance? Yep, just fine. And because this thing relies on balloons, down it goes. That wasn't too bad, actually. Not the strongest thing in the world, but it works. Excellent. 
This time testing with no propeller, only the thrusters. Takes much longer to get out of the water. But that does let me add an extra warhead or an extra fuel tank, so that will go further. That's not actually too bad. I thought that'd be worse. Of course, they won't be aiming at things actually in the water, so even though that looked a bit awkward then, that's no problem. They'll only be firing at things above zero altitude. In fact, maybe above ten. Ignore these. These were a failure. Try two with the torpedoes. Yep, their activation is slow enough that they won't end up hitting me, no matter the angle. Although, they are fired so high, that happens. And that's with ballast tanks. Maybe they, maybe they shouldn't be so quick. I've gone for very quick, very agile again. That was better than expected, actually. But yeah, they're so fast, they end up breaching the water at the start. Is that really a problem? Not really, because the ballast tanks, they go back underneath straight away. It just means things right above us will be a bit harder to hit correctly. Tempted to make them frag so they don't knock each other around, but that bonus damage from underwater explosions is just far too high. And on the upside, as you can see, the missiles were not firing. Now, if we spawned the Atlas, the missiles should then fire. Yes, they do. And the torpedoes will as well, because I haven't set them to only fire at things underwater right now. So, ignore that. That's something we need to fix. Good. Basic weapons on the side are working now to armor them up, armor up the core. This is going to take forever. Be right back. I've just created some nice basic shells, so I want to see what the recoil is going to be like on this thing. I've just loaded some really, really basic shells into this weapon, so hopefully it will at least show us what the recoil is like. Not really looking at the effectiveness of the weapon right now, just how much is this going to bounce. Nothing at all. Beautiful. But in terms of effectiveness, it's still a 500mm 8m shell. Yeah. It's gonna hurt a lot, regardless what it hits, as long as it doesn't have shields. Of course, giving it aim point selection would be a nice thing, because right now it's firing at, well, the outside blocks. In terms of fire rates and actually sustaining fire, this has been going for a while now. Once again, it's not winning because it doesn't have aim point selection, so it's not firing at the mainframe, it's just destroying random lines of blocks, where kinetic shells do their best work when they go straight through something important, because they can go straight through huge sections of enemies. And the enemy is dead. Wonderful. Stable, yet somewhat slow descent. So, yeah, we have these turbines stabilizing the craft in addition to the internal rotors, and, well, it's too slow. To put it bluntly, it's far too slow, but it's very, very stable. So the next thing I want to test out is actually the main gun. Finally, I've just gave it some really basic ammo. It's just gunpowder, the super cavernation stuff, or whatever it's called, and then, of course, the armor-piercing round. So... Oh look, there's an atlas! Kill it, quick! First of all, recoil. Is there any? No, excellent. Secondly, damage. Well, yeah, it's gonna go straight through enemies like the atlas. Probably do some decent damage against stacked armor as well, as, as we saw at the very start of the video. Hmm, this little gun's actually doing better than expected. Lovely, considering it's so cheap and badly made. Behold the power of bad engineering when you're using something quite meta. Bottom of the ocean. Wow, you're actually stable like that. Hmm. I'm impressed. Go you. Oh no! What is that on the horizon? Is it the deadly bulwark? As soon as it loads in. I heard an explosion, so that was good. Yep, layers of- wow, layers of armor being sheared there by the main gun. Well, 
couple of like, well, it's certainly causing things to explode. Of course, don't worry, I understand this isn't a fair fight. I'm just testing out how good the gun is all on its own. The gun? The gun. To be fair, it does cost like one third of the bulwark. Well, the bulwark is starting to sink, so that's a good start. I wonder what it's aiming at. It can destroy a lot of armor if it's a good hit. And that's heavy. Was that heavy armor that just got knocked out? Or is it regular? That might be heavy there. Unsure. Oh, look at that. Just carving sections. But yeah, against something which can actually counter it, right now, this is nowhere near finished, so it just would die, honestly. I'm okay with that damage output, considering how cheap we are. We're still vastly under 100,000. Also, I underestimated the strength of that gun. Even though it's badly made, it's... Well, it's working. Could be better, though. Could have a faster fire rate, for instance. There we go. The bulwark is dead. Um, an okay first test, quote-unquote. The thing is, it's not really good to test something like this fully until it's completely done, because right now the armor isn't done and stuff, so it can't really sustain a fight, but in terms of offensive capability and sheer annoyance, it's gonna work, because it's a hard counter, and I know how cheesy they are, that's why I'm building it in this series and not in an actual campaign, because, well, hard counters can be very boring, because this will not die to anything which can't counter it, and that is a very specific type of craft. How about the ship I built in the last video? Yeah, those torpedoes breaching the surface may be a problem. And it's already AI dead. <laughs> Cannon is so brutal. It goes through it. Yeah. Uh, ignore, ignore salvage, please. You're just attacking something which is already long since dead. Yeah, haven't layered up the armor yet, but at least the armor on the inside stood. There's two layers there, and then this one layer. I'm about to add a layer all the way around there. Then I'm going to add a layer behind this, and then behind the missiles. So that's four layers, plus a two, so about about six, maybe seven I could put in the center. Here's going to be at least five. I would say the weak point will be... Actually, no, the top section is a strong point. Yeah, the weak point's from the side. Anything attacking from the top is going to have a difficult time. Anything attacking from the same... Altitude or using torpedoes will have a much easier time. Well, for now, I am really all out of time for today's video. I was so close to not actually finishing this video or uploading it, so I really hope you've enjoyed me just experimenting, messing around, and honestly getting something completely different to the original intention. And if you do enjoy Stuff Lab, please tell me, and would you like me to actually finish this design. This design is not finished yet, similar to the harpoon craft. But don't worry, a lot of people were asking about that. The melee harpoon sub thing will come back soon. I just don't know how I want to finish it yet, so I've been delaying that until I have a really good idea of what I want to do. But would you like to see this? Tell me. And if you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I do hope you've enjoyed this extra video. Goodbye.